So hello and welcome back to Aunt Oliver. Today we are continuing our little Queen tutorial thing. We started off with a test up setup tutorial, then a Queen catching tutorial, and now it's time to how you take care of your Queens. So this is the part before the first workers arrive and after you just caught your Queen and she's now in the test up setup. And I hope you enjoy the video. So when you have captured your queen, it's time to identify her. And I can't stress this enough, identify, identify, identify her. When you finally have an identification, you can't really use that for that much right now, but it's just very important that you know it. Almost every single queen just needs to be inside of a test tube, put in a drawer and closed for dark. So it isn't all queens that can just be put away in a drawer and just forgotten about. There are three special types of queens and I'm gonna go through all three now. The first thing to note is, is it a semi-colossal queen or a fully colossal queen? A fully colossal queen is a queen like Lacius Niger and she just needs to be put in a test tube setup, left in a drawer and just not be disturbed for the next while. A semi colossal queen isn't really something we see here in Europe, but in Australia and other countries there's a lot of semi colossal queens. A semi colossal queen is a queen that doesn't get fed up when she is home at her nest. She got dust, get some food, but when she has her nuptial flight, she will fly up mate and land and then proceed to dig a hole and start her colony. But she doesn't have a lot of food, so she has to go out and hunt for some new food. And therefore, when you have her in a test tube setup at home, she needs to be put in the outworld so you can still feed her without really disturbing her. I would really recommend if you have a semi-colossal queen that you watch some specific videos about the species or just semi-colossal queens in general to get some more tips and tricks because they kind of have a special care. The next weird species you can get is called a Pacific Queen, para Parasitic Queen, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, but that is basically when a queen has her nuptial flight to land and then overtake an already existing colony. So she may walk around for a few weeks, even months, trying to find a specific colony. Here in Denmark we have a lot of different parasitic queens. We have Lacius and Bratus, Lacius Falingas, don't know how to pronounce that, Formica Rufa, Formica Sanguini, and there are still loads of queens that are parasitic. If you have a parasitic queen at home, you will have to give her workers and brood from the same gene as she is in. If it's uh, Lacius Umbratus, she will have to get some Lacius Niger brood and some Lacius Niger workers. Again, this is kind of hard to just talk about here, so I would really recommend that you watch a specific video about your specific species. Again, identify your species and read about the species. The last thing we're gonna talk about is whether your queen is a polygynous queen. Again, not sure if I pronounced that correct, but that basically means that she can have multiple queen in her colony and she isn't alone. My Mavicarupa colony is a polygynous colony since there are three queens equally working together. For us humans, it looks like they're working together, but actually they do have kind of their own little ranking. There's a queen that's the number one queen, and when you have them in your test tube setups, you may see the queens fighting a little bit, and they can actually end up killing each other. So again, if you have a multiple queen colony, I would really recommend that you read among the species because they can't really live in queen setups like other colonies because they may be aggressive to each other to find out which queen is the number one queen. But let's come over to my queen again. This is Alicia's Nighty Queen and she's very basic. The only thing she really needs is to be in a tested setup and then just don't be disturbed. Every time you disturb her, that's just a minus in the time before she gets her first workers because every time you disturb her, she gets stressed and she may eat the eggs and she may stop laying eggs. All anchovers would recommend this, just don't watch your queen in her phantom stages. What you see in the background is a video of her and as you can see, she isn't moving a bit. You almost can't even see it's a video. And if you just let her be for a week and then maybe check on her again and then or a week or maybe two weeks and then check on her, you may see a queen with eggs, like my latest night queen. This is the same queen and she is as happy as last time, moving all over the place. And again, every time you look at them, there's a chance they now will eat the eggs or step on the eggs or stop cleaning the eggs. And I can't stress enough, don't look at the queen until she gets her first nanitics workers. 
and that is just the first generation of workers. This will, will be a lot smaller than their true size of a worker, but when I come as that far in my little queen setup here, I will make another video about then what to do. So yeah, that's been it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in another video. Bye!